Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the hydration of alkenes using steam and an acid catalyst. You should then be able to state the major and minor products from the hydration of asymmetric alkenes. And this is for the OCR and Edexcel specs. Ok, now we've already looked at electrophilic addition reactions of alkenes. And if you haven't watched those videos, then you need to watch them now. In this video, we're looking at the electrophilic addition of water to alkenes to make alcohols. Scientists call this a hydration reaction. I'm showing you here the hydration of ethene to make the alcohol ethanol. In hydration, the water is in the form of steam, and phosphoric acid is used as a catalyst. The temperature is 300 degrees Celsius, and the pressure is 60 atmospheres. Ok, let's look at the mechanism for this reaction. I should point out that it may appear complicated, but the best way to tackle it is to keep drawing it out until you can do it from memory. As we've seen, the catalyst for this reaction is phosphoric acid. I'm showing you the structure of phosphoric acid here. Phosphoric acid has three hydrogen atoms, each bonded to oxygen. As we've seen, oxygen is a strongly electronegative element, so this means that phosphoric acid is a polar molecule. The oxygen atoms have a partial negative charge, and the hydrogen atoms have a partial positive charge. Ok, in the first stage of the reaction, the pair of electrons in the pi bond of the ethene are attracted to one of the positive hydrogen atoms in the phosphoric acid. So in this case, the positive hydrogen atom is acting as an electrophile. Now the pair of electrons in the pi bond form a covalent bond to the positive hydrogen atom. At the same time, the covalent bond between the hydrogen and oxygen breaks, and the pair of electrons now move completely onto the oxygen atom. As we've seen, when a covalent bond breaks like this, with both electrons going to the same atom, scientists call this heterolytic fission. So at the end of stage 1, we've got a carbocation intermediate with a positively charged carbon atom. We also have a dihydrogen phosphate ion with a negatively charged oxygen atom. Now at this point, you need to remember that the phosphoric acid is a catalyst, so this means that we need to regenerate the phosphoric acid in a later stage. Ok, now in stage 2, the carbocation intermediate reacts with the molecule of water in the form of steam. Remember that the oxygen atom in the water molecule has two lone pairs of electrons. One of these lone pairs now forms a covalent bond between the oxygen and the positive carbon atom in the carbocation intermediate. So at the end of stage 2, we now have an intermediate molecule containing a positive oxygen atom. This oxygen is positive because its lone pair of electrons have formed a covalent bond. Ok, now the final stage involves the dihydrogen phosphate ion that we made earlier. The dihydrogen phosphate ion forms a covalent bond to a hydrogen in the intermediate molecule. At the same time, the covalent bond in the intermediate now breaks by heterolytic fission, and the pair of electrons in the bond now move completely onto the oxygen. So at the end of this stage, we've made our product molecule ethanol, and we've regenerated our phosphoric acid catalyst. Ok, now as we've seen, the hydration of ethene produces ethanol. But what about when we hydrate an asymmetric alkene such as propene? How do we determine which carbon atom will bond to the hydrogen atom of the water, and which will bond to the OH group? Well, in this case, we need to apply Markovnikov's rule, which we looked at in a previous video. Remember that the hydrogen is more likely to bond to the carbon atom, which is already bonded to the greater number of hydrogen atoms. Looking at propene, we can see that carbon 1 is bonded to two hydrogen atoms whereas carbon-2 is only bonded to one hydrogen atom. So this means that the hydrogen atom in the water is more likely to bond with carbon-1 in propene. This makes propan-2-ol our major product, and propan-1-ol our minor product. Ok, so hopefully now you can describe the hydration of alkenes.